I'm just going to do a final save in case I need to come back to this. And now we can look at getting it machined. So on my wasteboard, um, I've got a series of holes which are used for clamping. And then you can probably just see I've got four pins, one, two, three, and four, uh, which allow me to bring something in and get it all uh, lined up in the same place each time I position it. And that's the sort of thing that I need in order to have this that way and then flip it and have it that way. These, these pins have been put in a long time ago and I know that they're absolutely right angles and it gives me a really good starting point for all of my jobs. Now in both these bits of work, uh, the center part of what I'm doing will be cut out and I don't want that to go flying off. Now I could have had tabs to hold the middle bits in place, but I didn't want to have that little bit of cleaning up with sandpaper and a craft knife just to roughen up the edge in any way. So uh, I'm using double-sided sellotape and I'm going to stick some of it on here now and that will hold the piece that uh, ends up being uh, cut out from the middle, hold it in place and stop it interfering with the rest of the cut. Right, that's the double-sided tape on and now I'm going to very carefully position this in here so that it's right up against my stops and I'm going to put my clamps in place now so I don't accidentally move it. And just to be on the safe side I'm going to push down here to help unite the double-sided tape with my little bit of waste material underneath. So that should be okay. So let's turn the X-carve on. Uh, the next thing to do is to set the home for the job. And in my case, as, as you would have seen from the footage I did with the spire, uh, that's going to be the bottom left-hand corner of my piece of material. Now getting X and Y uh, lined up is pretty easy. You can do that by eye, uh, or if you're lucky enough as I am, uh, when you've done a homing command, you might know exactly how many millimetres X has to change, how many millimetres Y has to change in order to get it to that bottom left-hand corner, which is a fixed element now on my uh, work table. So I've, I've just done that. I've done 28 for the X and 30 for the Y, and that gets that in the right position. But Z is a different matter because every time you change a tool, uh, it might not be in exactly the same place. So the Z I do by using a little piece of paper, and in this case it's a post-it note, uh, which I wiggle underneath the tip of the cutter. And when I feel that that's just touching the surface of the material, that's when I know I'm in the actual home position on top of that material. And that's it, uh, just there. I've just got it so I can just slide that post-it note out. So having done that, I can now issue a command to tell the machine uh, that it's in the home position for the job. And the command I use is G92. And then I do X0, Y0, Z0. And I always check that very carefully. So the machine now knows that that position at the bottom left-hand corner on the top surface of my piece of wood I'm going to cut, that is the home for the files that I'm going to be sending it. Now I'm in file mode on the Universal G-Code sender. I've got two files, I'm going to send them one at a time, but in between I've got to do a flip with that piece of wood. So the first one I'm going to send is the triangle one here. Uh, I'm ready to send that file. I've got to do two things. The first one is to turn on my DeWalt writer and then also my extractor. So that's all working, all connected up. I can now send the file. And that's that done. You can probably just about see uh, the shape that's been cut out and my piece in the middle did not uh, come detached from the double-sided tape, thank goodness. <laughs> right, now we've got to flip this and do the second one. Now I use manual control to move uh, the gantry out of the way so I can get at this and then flip it. Now, if you remember, 
This is a reference side, so it's just being flipped like that. And this is a reference edge, that's a reference edge there. So that's how I'm going to flip it. But of course, I'm still joined on with double-sided tape. That's the first bit of template which you can see there. There's the cutout. I'm now going to flip it like this, keeping that reference edge that side. And we've got the new reference side here. Uh, but of course, I've got to put some double-sided tape here. So the double-sided tape is on, and again, just like last time, I'm going to very carefully bring this in and make sure it is up against all my stops. That's it, and an extra press down in the middle there. Remove all my tools from the, the top. Now, I've not changed the cutter. I've not uh, reset the machine in any way. And the machine still knows that the reference point for the job is in that same position that we'd set before. Even though we've taken uh, things around, it still believes that the origin for this job is in that same corner. So we can now send the next file. So that's sent that file, and just as last time, uh, the centerpiece didn't come adrift, and I can now take my template out of the machine, and hopefully it's job done. And there's my template. The idea is that I can then do this part of the work first, flip the template, and then do this bit. Uh, <laughs> that's the theory anyway. We'll see how it goes. Right, I have to confess, I had a practice go just now, um, and now I'm going to try and make uh, a little better piece. And what I've done is I've stuck my work piece down onto the sacrificial piece below it. Uh, so that means any cutouts won't move. I've got my reference edge here and the one at this end, which I'm lining up with the two edges of the piece I'm going to cut into. And it's the, the plug for the hole that I'm going to do first. Get this nicely lined up, as accurately as I can. And when I'm happy, I'll put the clamp in place, get that in place. Now I've got to make a judgment how deep I want this. The material is 10 millimeters thick, so I think I'll go for five. And the way I'm going to do that is to set my writer up in the normal way, let it hit the material, and then you can see on this scale here, I raise this now by five millimeters, and that at the same time raises this piece here. So I'll raise that by five millimeters and then lock it in place. So that will give me a five millimeter depth of cut. Now, because this is a plug, I'm going to plunge down and I'm going to keep uh, the guide all the way against the circular part of the template. Okay. Hopefully you can see I've made that circular plug, which is going to stick up there. Now, the next bit is slightly tricky, and this is where I wish I had a second template, uh, which would allow me to cut a bit more material away. I'll explain why. We're going to turn the template over like so. So I've still got this reference edge here and I've got the other edge here as the reference at this end. And what I've got to do is to cut away at the same depth that I've just been cutting all the material here prior to uh, doing a cut all the way through the material but following uh, the, the template here. Well, there it is. Remove my template and take this off. There. And this is a piece I want. You can see where I, I said it needs just a little bit of cleaning up. And I can do that now very simply. Right, I had one wh whoopsie. My router hit one of the clamps and I thought I was still pushing against the edge of the template. Well, that wasn't the case. And you can see there's a little nick there uh, which is what caused that but other than that I've actually made the item I was trying to make and there it is so there's my little gizmo which I've made this is the plug I'm now going to change my setup so I can do the hole that this plug will fit into how exciting Right, I'm just getting set up now for the second part of the process, which is to create uh, the hole into which 
our little gadget is going to fit. So I put the double-sided sticky on my piece of material and push down quite hard. So I'm going to line the template up in the same way as before. Now this time we're going to have a hole that goes all the way through and then a triangular section which goes down to the same depth that this part is. So that this will then fit down into it. At least that's the theory. And we're choosing a side and a side, two sides to line up with our material. Final check. Yep, happy there. Now after my experience with this one where uh, the router hit uh, the one of the clamps uh, and hence I got that little ding there, uh, I'm going to make sure these clamps are a little bit out of the way this time. And this is a hole so we're going to go all the way through. And just as before, I'm now going to flip the template. Yep, I'm happy with that. Now I've got to get the depth right. So the way to do that is to put the writer onto the material. So the, the cutter is touching the surface of the veneered walnut. And this is set to zero. And I'm now going to raise this. And you can see this part here going up and down. And I'm going to put that in there and then tighten that up and that then that thickness of that material is the extra depth that I'll now plunge and this time we're taking out all the material in the gap check every now and again that there's nothing untoward going on Right, so there that is, uh, and here this is. I'm going to off that down in now. And if you look carefully, there is where I had the little whoopsie as I went round with uh, the right and I hit the, the clamp. But otherwise, that's a pretty neat fit. And on this other side, it's also a pretty neat fit. So this template is good to go for that shape. Well I hope you now have some ideas of how you can make templates of your own. And remember that if you're doing a template that needs two parts, as I've shown here, uh, that this idea of being able to flip it about a symmetrical line through there is the way to go. It then makes lining up so much easier. And for that you need one, two, three edges, which are your reference edges. Uh, the fourth edge, ignore it. And you can get, despite my little whoopsie, a pretty good fit on two sides. Now, all of this has been made possible by several things. Obviously, today it was the CNC which allowed us to make that. But when it comes to the routing element, we're using the UJK metric guidebush set and also uh, a set of metric cutters. Mine came from Trend, they're the professional ones, they're very good, and mine go from four to 12 millimeters. It also helps to have a crib sheet. Now I know right now that I'm talking that this crib sheet is available on the Axminster website. If you go to the product page for the UJK guidebush set and look for further details or something, you'll find it there. Uh, on the website. You've got to press a few buttons from this product page in order to get to it, but you will get the very latest version of that. And of course, you can now imagine you could make those butterfly patches that people uh, tend to use on big planks of wood that have got a little bit of a split in them, and they normally make them out of contrasting material. You could uh, do all sorts of things. Now you see it, now you don't, or now you don't see it at all. Uh, obviously, I, I made no effort to do grain matching here. It's quite good, isn't it? Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.